I just wanted to welcome everybody to tonight's talk and launch. Um, it's really a pleasure to welcome um, Daniel Lefcourt and Clement Valla um, this evening to talk about this new commission um, as part of DIA's Artist Web Project series. Um, I'm Kelly Kivlin. I'm an assistant curator at DIA. And I'm just going to try to situate myself here. Um, so yes, thank you for coming and welcome. Um, it's actually marks our 37th project as part of this series and it's one of our longest running, I think it is the longest running series for DIA in terms of new commissions and um, one of the, the longest running series in the country and possibly internationally for new work that explores this digital media realm, I guess we'll call it that, once I think in old publicity it was the World Wide Web, um, but now it's transcended that, so um, thankfully. Um, yeah, it was, it was initiated actually in early 1995, so that tells you a little bit about the history. Um, before we begin, I just have a few quick announcements, just some thank yous. Um, this new project modeler is made possible in part by DIA's commissioning committee, so we'd like to thank Jill and Peter Krauss, Leslie and Mac McCune, Jenny and Selmo Nissenbaum, Liz Garing Radke, and Kirk August Radke. And then we also have generous support that's been provided with public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. And of course, we'd like to thank Brooklyn Brewery for the beverages. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce artist Daniel Lefcourt and designer Clement Valla, who are both, uh, well, colleagues at RISD, but um, I think you've both met there but I'll give individual bios and then we can begin with the collaboration. Um, so Daniel Lefcourt, who's sitting next to me for those that don't know, was born in New York and received his MFA from Columbia University. Over the past 10 years, he has had solo exhibitions at Taxter and Spengemann in New York, Campoli and Presti in Paris, Sutton Lane in London, and White Flag Projects in St. Louis, Missouri. His work has also been included in numerous group exhibitions including First Among Equals at ICA Philadelphia in 2012, Knight's Move at Sculpture Center in Long Island City in 2010, and Subject Index at the Malmö Kunsthall in Sweden in 2008. And his solo show Modeler, a uh, work of the same name, a show of the same name, I should say, was recently presented at Mitchell, Ines, and Nash in June uh, of this year. And he is an assistant professor of foundation studies at the Rhode Island School of Design. And Clement Valla, who's sitting across from me, is an artist working with computer programs that reveal hidden processes and mechanisms embedded in everyday logarithmic systems, quite complex. And his work has been exhibited internationally, and he recently had a solo exhibition at Mulherin and Pollard Projects in New York. But he also has several openings he just told me about, so maybe we can speak to that a little bit later. Um, and Vala is an associate professor of graphic design at the Rhode Island School of Design. So I guess I first wanted to start a little bit uh, with your collaboration and how you, I guess, initiated this work, Daniel, and then also how you initiated the collaboration with Clement. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, thanks for having me here and thanks for working on the project and mm -hmm. thanks to everyone at DIA who worked on the project and Sarah and of course oh, Clement. Yes. That thanks to Sarah Tucker too, who's the producer of this series. Yeah, and Clement who built the project. Um, yeah, so we, we met at RISD and um, we had been starting work on a project, a kind of um, the, the tool that we were working on for our students, a kind of reference library. Mm. Um, and. Meanwhile, I was working on the show, the modeler show for Mitchell and Snatch, and I knew I wanted a, a kind of web component. Um, I had been collecting images as a kind of reference library, mm -hmm. and there's always this kind of excess of information and content that gets edited out of mm -hmm. any show, and so it kind of started as a place to put that, right? Where do you put that mm -hmm. excess? Um, and and that's, that's how it started, yeah. So you started collecting these digital images and then sort of creating categories or folders and just sort of putting them away and... Yeah, I mean, like, every kind of... every person with a cell phone now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so... And then thinking... But it also, the impetus was partially thinking about a kind of afterlife for an exhibition, mm -hmm. but also because... And thinking about the mediated image... Um, and uh, 
You know, I think a lot of the, the kind of subject of the exhibition was thinking about a kind of loss, right? Uh, thinking about displacement, thinking about how um, painting and uh, like the paintings in the show kind of function in a way as paintings, mm -hmm. but they also don't fully perform as paintings. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the subject of the work, um, how, how they do fulfill that role and how they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and one of those, one of the ways kind of, and, and just thinking about the way painting circulates, the way images circulate and would circulate mm -hmm. inevitably, maybe. Um, and trying to kind of assert some, not control, but to think that through, mm. to think about that kind of loss that happens from the process, from the studio to the exhibition, to the dissemination of images. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Both loss of control and also sort of a loss of the work in a way, is that right? Or is it a way to retain some of that control of how you look at and, and engage with images of work? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, anytime, you know, there's, I think the, that going from working in the studio mm -hmm. to simply presenting an exhibition in a gallery, there's a certain alienation mm -hmm. that happens from one's own work mm -hmm. and the work takes on another life. Um, and so to kind of thematize that in, within the work, mm -hmm. that was kind of one of the projects of the show and then became a project for this. How do you thematize that kind of the, um, the way of thinking through materials and then and the kind of presentation in a final form? And any time you kind of um, finalize a work, I think that's as if we can, as if the work mm -hmm. is fully made, right? There's always this kind of frustration of that the work can't contain everything, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, How did you shape the invitation to Clement when you first approached him about sort of collaborating on this new work? Yeah, did I, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, at first it was going to be um, uh, a lot more collection of, of images of like working sample images from your own process rather than external images. And you wanted this kind of endless archive of every iteration, every little crop, every little little sort of minute thing that Maybe came out of your, your process. Um, right, there were tons of, I was taking um, tons of photos, right, hundreds of photos, so mm -hmm. it was also a place to put that um, and a way to kind of sort through that and influences as well. Mm -hmm. um, you want to tell a little bit about the different categories of images that you're collecting more specifically? Well, this is pretty obvious. Behind us here we see the tools, the yeah, hammers. I mean, so that's where it all started, but I think it ended, we ended up in a different like the project really ended up at a different place. That was the impetus, right? Okay. And um, like as I kind of dove in, so I think we were we first started. Okay, well, let's put every image there, and then it started just the kind of thinking about scrolling through images, mm -hmm. and that kind of became the subject matter. Was that like that? Um, the kind of conventions of display mm -hmm. for images online, right? So what are the conventions? There's like the blog, there's Tumblr now, and but there's also Amazon and kind of like the, the product page, right? Uh, the product page, uh, what, you know, what else were we talking about? Like just sort of like catalogs with lots of little thumbnails mm -hmm. we, we were looking at a lot and, and really just paying attention to, yeah, that the way which, in which we would sort of more or less absent-mindedly Mm -hmm. scroll through or flip through or just like browse these these giant collections because you I mean it looks as if I mean from as many of, as you can see the images have a a certain texture to them and a, a look of, of facing and um, filter um, so obviously it's not only just the digital realm of how you scroll and, and view images or interact with them but it's also you must have been looking at previous models you know the catalog um, other other forms of looking at sort of a seriality of images. Right. Um, and there was the McMaster Car website, mm -hmm. which was the, yeah, yeah. yeah you all know, <laughs> the artists, you can tell who the artists are. Like, oh, yeah, they, they know <laughs> the website, okay. So there's familiarity um, with those types of... of 
Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yes, that's the McMaster Car logo <laughs> appropriated, which is just like a big, this McMaster Car is just a supply company that sells like screws and hanging hardware and all this kind of thing. And it's just this massive mm -hmm. um, catalog and the website's kind of seems like it's maybe from the 90s and they didn't quite update it. And, um, and it's like too much information. I mean, and it's so poorly um, filtered in a way, mm -hmm. right? It, um, and, and so that kind of just like thinking about how you deal with these mass quantities of information. Um, I also, you know, in the, I, I worked for, you know, in the 90s, I did some internet stuff, right? Um, I, I, I like worked for a stock photo company trying to like develop a system. I, I also worked for like a digital printing company where we do trade show booths. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that this was a little bit of thinking back to that work that I had done and how um, just like kind of managing images, mm -hmm. like commercial image production. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess addressing the, the image filter, um, I guess a lot of Daniel's questions were about how, how do you really, I mean, going back to your notion of displacement, how do you have all of this stuff but never really have access to it? And we actually played around with the filters a lot, like the balance between legibility and not having access. And then when you go to the product page that's, that's up right now and, and you kind of zoom into it, it's like too much information, so you're, you're too close. So it was always this... It's there, but but not you don't quite have access to it. So that was a lot of the filtering yeah. that we played around. I with. mean, and also there's you know like there's this thing I think that's haunting art production right now, which is for artists, which is like, are we applying filters? Mm -hmm. Is that what we do? Right. So like the the idea, what was a kind of personal develop like development of a personal idiosyncratic style of mm -hmm. of, of the modernist artist say. Um, now you know the dan the kind of prob one of the problems of contemporary art is are we just has that been reduced to like you know Apple F like can apply a filter and so you know I was just like all right let's just go full let's if that's that's what we do let's mm. dive in here's like the conceptual art filter on everything or a kind of like sad filter right I mean it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you've really, I mean, you've really debased a lot of these, these images, you know, you've really created a screen and the filter is such that it, it almost, flat. well, you'd once said, I think, in conversation that you're not trying to provide any meaning in this work, and I think that's really conveyed in how you treated the images um, for me, because I feel as if that filter does neutralize everything in such a way that it's, it, even though it's a product, the meaning is sort of is neutralized when it's in groupings or a collection of this sort. Yeah, it so. literally obscures the image mm -hmm. too, and it's like it's also the photo. It's like the photocopy filter, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it dates it to to another era, but it, and it dates it to an analog era. Um, there's like pure filter actually. That those are just filters on filters, um, and then when you zoom in. It's, it's also, it's then like a 3D, so it's then a 3D model mm -hmm. um, that, so which is a fairly contemporary uh, technology, but then with the analog filter applied to that as well. So Clement, I'm gonna ask you a question about this particular section. Um, and I think at one time you were calling this the terrain section, is that right, Daniel? Mm -hmm. um, what, what type of technology, I mean, because I saw this change through the last few months in terms of how you were treating this particular section. What, what was involved in really, wow, <laughs> <laughs> making, making that happen, actually? You know, in terms of, I've never seen anything like that, and I feel it really serves what the conceptual backing of what you were really intending for that section, and I wanted to know how you convey that to Clement and then how he made that possible. Well, I mean, yeah, it... In a, in a way, it's it's actually kind of conventional technology because oh, what we is. were okay. doing was 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 looking at things like the Amazon.com mm. Zoom. I mean, that was like the we ripped off the McMaster catalog, and then we wanted to rip off 
Amazon. I mean, that, that, was, that was part of it. And they always have this zoom where you can zoom into the images. Mm -hmm. So it was more a matter of taking that and then, and then breaking it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's actually not a functional zoom. You can't zoom in and out. As you just saw, you're kind of stuck in this, in this sort of too zoomed in view where, where the little red square is, is kind of tiny. And so uh, the, the working method was that, that I kind of knew these tools, I kind of knew where to, where to grab them. Mm -hmm. But then Daniel and I would, would sit there for hours and, 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 and like, mm -hmm. like different ways to break them or like mm -hmm. different subtleties of the in interactive experience really is, yeah. is, is how That's we funny because like what I learned, I've learned making this project was that like kind of understanding what the connotations of each kind of layout was, which is actually really subtle. Um, mm -hmm. and, and not only of kind of what type of catalog this is, so sometimes it points towards being a product catalog or just like an image database, like a mm -hmm. photographer's Lightroom. Um, that's actually all the images from the Dia collection, <laughs> like run through the Photoshop contact sheet thing with the file names and then the filter. Um, I lost my train of thought. I got distracted by the internet. <laughs> oh, we're in the different connotations of like... <laughs> you get lost, you get lost in the, in the database. Wait, let me check my email. Um, you know, and so, yeah, so to kind of like what was so useful about being able to sit there and work together because I don't have the technical coding skills was that we could sit there and like slowly massage it until it was neither nor like it's not quite a blog it's not quite a product catalog it's not quite McMaster and um, and like and it's subtle it's subtle things and changing the dimensions of the image um, can I ask just a little insider question a bit um, in terms of the labeling? Because I know we talked about that and that um, would you want to give any secrets away as to how you chose to label? Because there's numerical and then there's also language-based labels that don't really correspond to the images at all but have meaning in, the, in how they're being presented. So do you want to talk a little bit about your decisions yeah, in regards to that? discussion images. There. Oh yeah, there's some. Um, I started at started out just um, kind of on a, in a more literal direction, and it wasn't quite working. And at some point, I just opened up the code that Clement had written and started copying and pasting, mm -hmm. and that kind of opened up the territory a bit. Um, and then started improvising again off of there. So thinking about like the error, a lot of error mm -hmm. codes and this kind of thing, null. And, um, and then also thinking about uh, kind of the conventional formats of image um, keywording, right? Image information. So media, date, and then just kind of throwing in every, you know, oil on canvas, uh, 1993, I think there's, I mean, I've been saying this a bit, but there's quite a bit of trickery to the project in both visual perception tr trickery as well as with this sort of skewing of how we label it or how you chose to label the images. And I think you even said to me that you were at times sort of messing with Clement because you were taking words that were part of the code, but then also sort of switching them around a little bit to 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 break them apart and abstract them from the image they were um, but the, the order is random, I should say, but um, in terms of how they relate to the images. I also wanted to know, um, you had mentioned that in your classes at RISD, you speak to your students about um, being mindful of the technic in work and it, the concern around that. I know you both must address this, and I wanted to sort of get a sense as to your individual feelings and then also how you speak about it or how it it might be present in your own work and thinking. Yeah, I mean, the danger of, of for me in doing this is because I don't code and I don't know all the available tools, um, is that it's a kind of, um, in a way, you're not qualified, right? In a sense, I'm not qualified to do this. So how do you, 
like, is that okay, right? So, and I think of, I mean, there's tons of, like a Picasso doing ceramics, right? He's not like a great, like innovator of ceramics. Mm -hmm. It's always Picasso doing ceramics in a way. Um, not that I'm Picasso <laughs> and <laughs> this is ceramics. Sorry for that. <laughs> that was slipped. Um, <laughs> but, and I'm, it's, but in a way I'm against, so it, there's part of me that's against that, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's against the division. Um, but then, I, you know, I think we tried to overcome it to a certain degree. Um, I mean, I think what I think what was so helpful that Clement allowed me to do was sit there all day mm -hmm. and just like run through every iteration of what's possible. And I could just ask him, well, can we do this? Can we do this? How hard is that? But there's something about fighting against a material when you're not versed in a material, you don't get that fight and you don't know what, what the fight is, what the battle is, especially with, with, the, with this as a medium, right? Because there's, in a sense, there is no medium. Um, everything's infinitely malleable, right? Um, and kind of what I learned is that actually it's not, and there, it's not infinitely malleable. There are conventions um, and that you either work with or against. Um, and I think one of the big influences for me, I mean, out of just talking about um, internet-based art is jody.org and thinking about their approach um, in terms of, like they always have a kind of subject that gets destroyed, right? Like that they're working against. So with Jody, like, and one of, that was my first kind of aesthetic experience online and maybe possibly my only, arguably my only was in like 1990, whatever, um, bringing up a Jody.org page and windows starting to open faster and faster until my machine crashed. I was like, that's amazing. That's like the best thing ever. Right? It's like this invasion of the real. See your hat. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But there's a bit of that here. That there, it's an extension. I think that's part of what interests me about this product or project is that it's an extension of that. You're not being hacked or taken over visually, but in some ways, you're really there's a familiarity with this type of infinite scroll and it just keeps going and going. And then you do get into this mode of, I'm being completely taken over right now, you know, and, and how you navigate that. Um, and there was a lot of changes I saw that you made in the project that, that lend to the viewer um, experiencing that and continuing to be engaged, which um, is fascinating because often we're so used to clicking in and out of things and, and just leaving, you know, that screen or that page, but it merits a continuous engagement, um, which I, I think has to do with these decisions that the two of you are making in terms of its layout um, and not mimicking um, all of these other formats that one easily could. So, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was potentially one of the most fun things about working with Daniel on this was, was that, you know, there's kind of so many defaults mm -hmm. that, that that um, you know, I'm used to relying on, and we're kind of all used to relying on on all these websites. And it was a real attentiveness to these defaults. Like even you know, we would sit there for hours and like shift like the speed of something, make it a little faster, a little slower, just to 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 offset it from the the kind of default mm -hmm. nature of it. And I think that that was actually just really interesting for, for my own work. Like really obsessing over over the, the minutia of every little little thing that happened and, and seeing you know how far we could shift them until they broke until they weren't familiar anymore I think was was one of the, the balancing games that we would play and kind of back and forth back and forth but yeah yeah mm. well I don't I was gonna try to open it up to some questions too if that's okay mm -hmm. um, do we have a, a microphone maybe like the thanks Max. Um, does anybody have any questions about the project or wants us to go to the, okay. You can ask out loud, it's okay. There's, there's a, a slight lag here, but it is the, the kind of... It felt a bit slow to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah like, like the fade uh, is a the fade is a tiny bit too slow. But but there here there is kind of a little more of a lag. Um, but everything is like a little like the the there's when you first come to the page it scrolls automatically. That's also a little sluggish. We kind of played around with, with that a lot. Um, but here it's mm. it's more than it, it is loading for that long. But mm. But basically, it, all, it always loads, even if you have the fastest connection possible. It still has this weird moment of loading. You talk about like, the physical exhibitions, that feeling of loss and alienation when you work from the South Studio and mm-hmm. into the gallery. Like, does the ability to cheat like this and add to it mitigate that at all mm-hmm. for you? Like, is that one of the feelings of the medium, or is that mm-hmm. almost a downside? Right, the the kind of possibility that it could go forever. Um, yeah, I mean, that's good. I mean, there's it makes me think of like the Robert Morris continuous project, Altered Daily. I mean, it theoretically could be. I think there's still that kind of. I th- think there's still that loss embedded it from like even. Like not, it's not that like taking like one's finished work and taking it to the exhibition is the loss. It's the loss of like completing a work, mm. right? Um, and so even I think just like that, you know, the launch or the, you know, it's not a, um, it's not a literal, right? It's not as literal. I think it's the completing a work to like, the 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 distance between like the idea of the work and how it comes out, right? or like the distance between the artist I wish myself to be and the artist I am, right? Like this is not it's a like a you know psychic loss. <laughs> I'm interested to know if you, working in this, the digital realm, you'll continue to do that, or how it, I mean, I guess extending from Sarah's question, the difference between working in the studio and working in this realm. I know you'll continue to tinker with this, of course, um, but not just this project, but do you think you have interest in, is there anything, were you envisioning any other projects while you were work, working on this, or anything that might continue? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, thinking about, I mean, a lot of my work is, comes through the computer, even the paintings mm-hmm. are going through various processes, digital processes. And, um, you know, I spend half my day on the computer anyway, dealing mm-hmm. with things, right? And so it's, it seems kind of like to try and to try and kind of turn that into a healthy part of one's mm-hmm. life or like some kind of, yeah, yeah. something. Anybody else have any questions? Mandy, yeah. I have a thought about, my partner Mark and I were talking a little bit about this breaking up, you know, going from something that's very, that looks very physical in reality to sort of this Blowing it out into this sort of somatomic reality. I don't, that's what I was thinking about. In this view. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what, in other words, like, there's really no materiality ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, in a way, so there are actually, this I kind of realized afterwards, but there are actually like three kinds of displacement in, in the piece. There's the kind of too far distance, the small icons, the filter, um, and then as you kind of approach, as you want more, um, well, so it would be the too far away, the filter, and then the too close, right, as, as another kind of displacement, a variation on that, right? So instead of kind of delivering meaning, right, because it doesn't actually ever deliver any content in a way, um, it delivers some kind of either pleasure or mystery or something like that instead as a substitute. Hopefully. (laughs) Well, um, I would like to know a little bit about your practice moving forward. 
you have a couple of things that um, are going on this week. And Daniel, I wanted you to say a little bit about what's on the horizon for you as well. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I, you know, work with this media a lot. I actually don't, um, Daniel is like the exception, um, but, I, but I don't really work with, uh, um, as a designer anymore with, with uh, kind, of, kind of clients, unless they're really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so, so um, I've, I've got some work in this auction that Philips is doing where they're trying to figure out how to monetize basically some of this, this type of work. Um, and we'll see how that goes. That is on October 10th. Um, there's like an online auction and then October 10th. And then I've got, yeah, just some, some group shows um, opening. Well, there's one tonight actually in, in the Contemporary Art Museum in North Carolina, of Raleigh in North Carolina and uh, at the Temp Art Space, which is a small downtown art space uh, on Saturday. So. Mm -hmm. It's been a busy week. <laughs> <laughs> Along with teaching, I know. So, oh, one more question I see, and then we'll what, take. What is a client -less design? Pardon? A client -less design. What would that, if you could just speak to that idea? Um, well, I mean, that's, I, I don't really consider most of what I do d design. Um, it's, it's, again, I'm kind of like Daniel. I used to be in the tech design world and kind of stepped out. Uh, maybe four or five years ago. Um, so, yeah. Now it's art. Now it's art, yeah. <laughs> and Daniel, you're working on some projects, I know. Yeah, so back to um, another, and trying to develop this work in relate, and the modeler project as a whole, because I consider this a kind of, a part of that body of work. Mm -hmm. um, and for a show in London at Compli Presti in February. We all should fly over there. <laughs> <laughs> There's something else you mentioned to me, too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah. um, it was a pleasure working with you both. And uh, thanks again to Sarah, who really helped, um, of course, with the conception of the piece and the back end and production. Makes, makes it flawless. Um, and is there anything else you'd like to add? Thanks no, so much. Thank, you. No, thank you both. And um, for those that haven't yet interacted with the project, we welcome you to do so. There's a couple computers over there. It's also launched on our website. Um, it's, I guess, diaart.org slash leftcourt. And if you have any other questions, feel free to, of course, come up and talk to Clement or Daniel. And thank you again for coming.